Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, hi, welcome back to my course on developing soft skills and personality. I am giving this from NPTEL MOOC at IIT Kanpur. I am Ravichandran from the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences here at IIT Kanpur. This is week number 7, module number 5 and lecture number 41. This particular module, as I said in the previous one, we will focus on body language which are relevant for interview skills or in particular what you should be doing in order to get success in interview using body language. Before I start, let us take a quick recapture of what I did in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, I uh, talked to you about interpreting nonverbal cues and then I started with what Mehrabian mentioned in terms of three primary dimensions, immediacy which refers to our liking and dislike, we go close or we withdraw. Arousal is the sense of animatedness we get in terms of our responsiveness and dominance that is the balance of power. The power structure is also indicated by the way we exhibit our body language. He added three C's that is context, cluster and change. So, you cannot jump into conclusion when you uh, determine the body language of a person, you need to identify the context, you need to group it and you need to focus on any change in the behavior of the person. In that context, we looked at the aspect of identifying a liar, followed by the discussion on challenges of studying nonverbal communication, where I focused on particularly four aspects which indicated that nonverbal communication is challenging because it is ambiguous, it is continuous, it is multi-channeled and it is culture based. Towards the end, I concluded by throwing you some caution by saying that do not jump into conclusions by looking at one single factor you need to combine. Consider all other external factors like temperature, weather, climate, etc. And then I also cautioned you that you should not jump into conclusions by looking at the appearance of the person because it can be deceptive. And if you want to change and develop, become competent communicators in terms of body language, what should you do? So, I said that you need to have an awareness in order to control your negative expressions. The awareness has been created through this course, particularly this week, uh, the complete focus was uh, aimed at giving you that kind of awareness, but keep uh, making your own skills developed by opening things from the environment. Develop wide range of nonverbal behaviors, particularly those ones which are associated with positive body language. And I wanted you to develop in particular those aspects of positive body language behavior such as smile, open posture, forward lean, touch, eye contact, gestures and nods. At the end of it, I said we will be looking at those body language uh, expressions which are relevant for interviews. Now, before I start uh, this module, I should tell you that developing body language for the interview will not start just one hour before the interview, will not start one day before the interview. It should have started already for you because it starts much before the interview. In fact, every day is an opportunity for you to develop your body language for the interview. Every time you are in human communication, it gives you chance to observe what is good positive language and what is negative positive language. All the time you have been preparing for that most important moment in your life that is interview. So, do not think that just a day before you will watch a video like on body language and then you will develop all the body language skills. So, that is my first forewarning to you, alerting you that you make it as an integral part of your life 
and then keep developing aspects of body language throughout your life and all the time you be prepared for situation like an interview and remember it has started already so it is not when you get the call letter. Having said that let us look at how best you can put your body language the moment you get the call letter. Now the moment you get the call letter first thing is that you need to psyche up that is you need to have a very confident frame of mind from that moment till you come out of the interview hall. Be calm and collected when the call comes do not get nervous or do not become over confident both are dangerous becoming too nervous too afraid and then underperforming that will hurt you or becoming over confident that will make you feel very arrogant and as the saying goes pride goes before fall. You will definitely have a great fall if you go with lot of arrogance and pride you may be insulted you may be humiliated you may be outright told that you are not the candidate they are looking for. But if you are nervous you need to understand that it is natural and positive. I have told in some of the previous lectures that certain amount of nervousness is required to generate such hormones like adrenaline in our system that will help us to work with extra power and extra confidence. And fear as such if you can control it, it will ensure huge success for you. So, only you need to learn how to control and you can control by thoroughly preparing for the interview. So, about which I am not going to focus much uh, in this one because the focus is on body language, but the thoroughness will also give you confidence and then you have to keep away from negative people, negative thinkers who will try to undermine you and who will think that you will not be able to make out whatever you do. Especially the night before the interview spend some time with a well-wisher, talk to your well-wisher, talk to uh, the person on Skype or if you uh, know the person who is just uh, around you just fix an appointment meet the person tell him or her why you would be the best for the position. So, the person will be able to motivate you further and then positively encourage you and then while talking to this person before you can possibly convince the interviewer on the next day that you are right for the job you have to believe it yourself, you have to psyche up, you have to keep your mindset that I am prepared, I am ready and I am the most appropriate candidate for this interview and then go with that killer instinct. So, you go it, once you go, you go there and then you should get it, you should not come back without getting this one. So, that is what I mean by killer instinct. Look at the purpose of the interview itself. If you look at it, employers are actually assessing your personality, communication skills, your appearance, your attitude and whether you will fit into the organization. They also want to know your strengths and weaknesses and then they just want to verify your resume. But if you look at the qualities I have listed the top 4 which I have listed in terms of your personality, communication skills, your appearance, your attitude they are completely to do with soft skills and uh, at least 3 of them are uh, to do with your body language. And more in terms of soft skills they look for other qualities like strong work ethic whether you are a professional, whether you have commitment, keenness, sincerity, integrity your level of self confidence. So, this is soft skill as well as your body language, strong communication skills, motivation, initiative, evidence of leadership skills, organizational skills, adaptability, flexibility, ability to work in teams, interpersonal qualities, how you are able to relate in terms of verbal and nonverbal behavior, time management skills, stress management skills, your ability to show meticulousness to details, friendliness and accessibility tact and diplomacy, conflict resolution skills. Now, all these ones are what we have been trying to understand in terms of soft skills and personality development, but more so in terms of body language the interview will be crucial 
in determining whether you should be selected or not. And that is why you should make a good first impression. First impressions count often far, far more than is logical. So, sometimes people say first impression is the good impression and you can try to change it, okay, can make it better. But most of the times in situations like interview, first impression is also the last impression. They immediately form their conclusions by looking at you by the way you present in the first two minutes or so. The result of the interview will depend largely on the impression you make during the first five minutes. Your subject, your marks and your experience got you to the interview, but it is the soft skills that will take you to the next level. And in soft skills, we are going to focus particularly on body language that will help you to get success in interview. Keep in mind five important aspects of body language as well as soft skills. Okay. Punctuality, so here soft skill as well as your mindset is important. Dress, handshake, body language in terms of your overall kinesthetics, your posture, gesture, etcetera and enthusiasm. Okay. So, how enthusiastic you are will determine how enthusiastic the interviewers can be. Let us look at these aspects individually. Punctuality, you should be there before time. So, if it is outstation, you should be there even one day before. The reason is that there could be delay in train, there could be accident, there could be anything that can happen to prevent you to reach there in time. And if you are serious about the interview, you should be there before time. And if possible, you can even go there and then see the place and familiarize yourself there. Know the people who are going to conduct, especially the staff who are involved in it, getting uh, introduced to them. Even the boss sometimes may be in an informal mood to talk to you before the interview, if you can meet the person. But be whatever it takes to arrive, even half an hour before, if you cannot go one day before. The reason is that late arrival for a job interview is never excusable, whatever reasons may be. Late arrival, they will always think that if you are a professional, you could have reached, you could have planned before time. Why did you plan it at the 11th hour, last minute? And before you arrive the interview hall, if possible, stop by the restroom. So, this is again important, you keep some extra time, instead of just reaching late or in time and rushing to the interview hall, just keep some time in the restroom and make sure that your hair is combed, makeup is fresh or if like, if you just come in a hurry and you are sweating, you can just gently wash your face, wipe it and then look fresh. And when you arrive and then if you are asked to uh, wait outside or even inside, so whom are you see first, you smile and say good morning, good afternoon. So this greeting should come very spontaneously and when you arrive the interview venue before entering into the hall, if you are asked to wait, take a seat and then do not drag the seat. Okay, take it politely, look at a magazine if available or if you have prepared some notes, take a quick look of the notes. But if it is a newspaper or something, do not read a newspaper because it just covers your face. So, you need to maintain eye contact, you need to smile, talk to people. So, uh, and then it also does not really give a kind of intellectual look, so you avoid that. If offered something to eat or drink politely decline. So, somebody is giving you coffee, taking it and then by chance you sp spilt it on your coat, on your uh, you know, well uh, dressed, newly dressed attire. So, you spilt it. Now, there is no way you can go wash it and then or you go with that kind of tea stain, coffee stain on the dress. It is not going to create a good impression. So, do not take that risk. And do not stare at people. So, whether you like, do not like them, do not stare at them. 
Okay. Be gentle and do not wait idly introduce yourself to other candidates and this would give you a chance to size up your competitors and later you can use their feedback for your own uh, betterment. Throughout be aware of your body language because you may think that your body language is important only when you go inside the interview chamber, interview room, but the venue where you are kept outside sometimes there may be hidden cameras, sometimes there are walls which uh, in uh, corporate offices they make you sit in places where cameras are not visible, but the walls themselves are appearing to be opaque to you, but it is transparent and then the other side the psychologist may be sitting and watching you and then the psychologist opinion is also taken before hiring you in very high posts. So, if the psychologist sees some kind of aberrative behavior in you, he or she will report to the employer and even before actually entering into the interview chamber, you might have been rejected before because of your negative behavior exhibited in the waiting room. Now, about dress, you should dress for interview success because your appearance will speak volumes before you ever utter a word. It also gives them a feeling that you are well groomed, you are well prepared and then you pay attention to details. And normally when you are well dressed, you get a feeling that you are really comfortable and confident about yourself. You will look nice and then you will be smiling, but when you do that try to be conservative in your dressing and be traditional. So, things which looks somewhat gaudy, somewhat uh, glaring, somewhat off the track, unconventional try to avoid. So, normally uh, like in formal occasions they would uh, prefer that you go with formal trousers and shirt preferably full arm with tie with the coat. In case of uh, women in Indian context instead of trying for like jeans and uh, t-shirt, it is always safe whether it is sari or it is a uh, uh, salwar or churidar that is safe that is conservative and traditional because they just want to see the way you are able to follow the norm the decorum. It is important that you dress for the position you want not the position you have. So, sometimes you may be very rich in the society. So, you want to display them that you are so rich and then you dress so lavishly, but the job itself is a very humble post, but you want the job. So, you just dress for the position you want, not the position you have as such. And some do's and then don'ts, particularly with regard to dress code for interviews, do's. It should be business like outfit the type that reflects your personality, character and values. So, clean ironed clothing and if you have a favorite dress and if you have a sentiment that is your lucky dress, so wear it, but it should be very clean and then it should be ironed and it should not have lot of wrinkles. Even if you wear matching cloths, it should be simple matching, it should not be too glaring, too gaudy colors should not be uh, used like red and yellow okay so so bright and so distractive avoid that clean polished conservative shoes should be used clean tidy well groomed hairstyle is expected fresh haircut a couple of days at least a week before the interview is desirable clean trimmed fingernails because fingernails sometimes when you put it on the table so it can if it is so dusty and then it's overgrown it also shows that uh, you are you are not maintaining good manners you are not caring about your physique and hygiene clean teeth so you should have brushed your teeth properly there should not be food items sticking and uh, smelling Appropriate accessories, I already spent quite some time when I talked about non-verbal communication about appropriate accessories. 
use the appropriate ones. Makeup should be simple, it should not be distracting. Minimal cologne or perfume and as I pointed out before that it should be based on the gender, the sex. Like if you are a female, use the ones that indicates that it is a female perfume, not uh, vice versa. Do not in terms of dress code for interviews, do not use this runners, jerkins and then as like you are just from the gym and then you go with that kind of uh, dress that you use in the gym, jeans, t-shirts, especially t-shirts with uh, very distractive captions, jewellery. Again, I spent quite some time in uh, the previous uh, lectures. So, distracting jewellery, whatever it is should be avoided, strong perfume, even strong after shave should be avoided. Smells of alcohol, so you are nervous, so you generally think that I will take a small peg, okay. but the moment you enter, the people are able to smell it. Same thing with garlic and cigarettes. And imagine that inside there is a person member who is a teetotaler who does not like smoking or even taking tea or coffee and so averse to this thing. The moment you enter, you are psychologically creating that impact that you are a bad person, you should not be selected. Although you may be really good and really intelligent and the most suited one for the job, you are already creating a negative impression even before you start speaking the first word. Do not chew gum, do not go for a punky weird hairstyle as I have put in the picture. It may look punky and then stylish for you, but not for the job and not at that moment when they are actually trying to interview for the position. Similarly, avoid showy displays, different kinds of rings, uh, polished uh, uh, nail polish with different colors and then uh, those things are again looking fashionable for you and your peer group, but not for the conservative kind of people who sit there in the interview. And then avoid non-verbal blockers, like they are actually non-verbal communication should be used very effectively. But do not use certain things, accessories, so that they act as blockers. So, they, they try to create negative opinion about you, wearing sunglasses for example and refusing to take it out, wearing a cap with funky captions okay. and then wearing complete black or dark dress, wearing a new uncomfortable dress using shopping bags to carry files. So, files should look very neat and elegant and if at all you have to carry it, you should have an appropriate suitcase which also looks very professional. But the used shopping bags having some brand name and then putting it there, it again gives a very unprofessional look. Having a close haircut on the interview day. Okay, just you remember that interview is today and then you just go and rush to have a close haircut. That again gives a very uh, unprofessional look. What are the keys to success as you start going towards the door? Once again clear your mind, stop all the negative chatter and turn off your beeper and cell phone, mobile phone, no sound. If possible leave it outside with someone or completely keep it in switch off mode. That is the worst body language you will exhibit as an accessory when they ask you the most important question and your mobile keeps ringing. So, you can say that that is the death knell for your interview. So, nobody wants to have somebody whose mobile keeps ringing and uh, the person is not able to control it and has not paid attention to the fact that the mobile is not even kept in silent mode before the interview because the most important thing is that interview moment and there is nothing at that time more important than the interview. Not even an emergency uh, call on somebody's accident or something, it is not that important provided somebody is there to take care. Finish the interview quickly and then attend to any calls, but not before, not at the time and let them know before you even say your first word that you are the right choice. How do you do that? You radiate confidence, you smile 
just show them that I am the right candidate, okay. even before they ask it. So, give them the feeling, radiate that confidence, enthusiasm. So, that will make them feel that, oh, this is a very probable candidate and they will not try to negate you so easily. The body language part of successful interview much relies on how you present yourself. You need to establish a good personal contact. You have to be very friendly, but at the same time you have to look professional. And throughout the interview pay attention to the body language. When you shake hands, if you are a student, do not be afraid that you are a student. So, do not become very nervous. And when you go and sit down, so you need to ask permission to sit down. Okay. So, you, you cannot just go and then sit even without taking the permission. In terms of handshake, a firm handshake is appropriate and it projects confidence. And when you give the handshake, you have to make eye contact, you have to look into the eyes of the other person while giving you the handshake. If you have difficulty maintaining eye contact, you can try this simple technique. That is, you can concentrate on noticing and remembering the color of the person's eyes as you shake hands. The other technique that is suggested is slightly go up, look at the forehead if you cannot maintain eye contact. So, that, but it is important that you should maintain it. You should not look this side or that side or you should not look up or you should not look down, you should not look back. And as I said before, you should never give this dead fish nor the knuckle grinder handshake. It should not be these two extremes. It should be this firm handshake that indicates that you are a professional, you are a thorough gentleman. Gestures, gestures should be very limited during the interview. Use open ones, whatever gestures you use. Extreme gestures can also be distractive and destructive in terms of uh, your uh, success chance. So, you minimize so that you do not use any negative gestures, especially avoid defensive gestures, putting the file here, putting the handbag uh, in the middle, okay. so or playing with the pen. So, these are all indicating nervousness and defensiveness. And when you do use gestures, make sure that they are natural and meaningful. So, uh, Namaste for example, is something like a very meaningful one and people get very impressed when you go and then say Namaste at the beginning. Try to ensure success in the first 30 seconds by maintaining eye contact, occasionally nod your head in agreement, simply they will ask you, is it your name? So, have you brought this? So, you just nod your head also instead of saying yes sir. Smile and show animation, so that animatedness will indicate that you are responsive. Lean toward the speaker, speak at a moderate rate and then use an assuring turn, assuring tone. Uh, the reason is that when they ask you something, if you for a while feel confused or you are not sure of yourself, so that will again make them feel little bit suspicious. So, always use an assuring tone. So, you, if they ask you something, even if it looks like a challenging one, but talk to them in a, in a manner saying that, yes sir, it is possible, I will try to do that, it can be done, instead of immediately saying, no, 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 how can I do this? So, always be in that assuring uh, mode. More on how to actually make this good first impression in an interview. You should research the company to find out its values, especially in terms of body language. For example, clothing. Now, as I have been telling you, it speaks more than what you uh, tell about yourself. So, find out what is the dress code that is enforced uh, and then what will be the appropriate dress. So, for a woman for example, the company says it should be all saris. So, it will be best you go in a sari, something that is similar to what uh, is preferred in the company. So, that will give a very good impression. They do not even have to think what kind of dress you will be wearing when you come for the job. You are already prepared. You show them that you know what is appropriate. And then uh, they base about 90 percent of their uh, decision in appearance alone. And especially they do that in the first 30 seconds. And in that first 30 seconds, you give them the impression, I know the value of your company and I value it. 
just by the way I dress. So, that creates a very terrific impression. The other most important thing is this enthusiasm and the eye contact. Show your enthusiasm by making eye contact and keeping an interested expression all the time. If embarrassed to maintain direct eye contact, focus on the nose or the forehead, but try to maintain it. Posture, again as I has been uh, explained to you in nonverbal communication in general, it also sends out a signal of your confidence and power potential. As far as interview is concerned, you should stand tall, walk tall and most of the all even sit tall in the sense, in a figurative sense that you show that you are confident all the time whatever manner you are walking inside, sitting, show them that you are confident and your posture should show them that you are fully uh, exhibiting your potential there. Let us take a quick checklist of pre-interview, appropriate dressing is important, maintenance of good posture from walking to sitting, smiling and radiating confidence through the smile, a firm handshake, cool and calm behavior throughout. You should not get angry, you should not get irritated, you should not respond violently even if they are trying to provoke you. Maintaining eye contact, using a loud enough voice, but not shouting and speaking clearly, knowing when to stop, leaving a pleasant feeling at the end. That is again a key, the enthusiasm with which you started you should end and you should leave them with a good feeling at the end of it, so that they or made to long for you. And at the time of the interview, as I said before, take permission at two times. One, before entering, if the door is closed, even you have to knock at the door, ask, may I come in sir, and then you enter. And as you enter, greet everyone in the room, good morning ma'am, good morning sir, and if there are many, good morning sirs, good morning ma'ams or at least namaste to all in an Indian context. And before you go and sit before the chair that is kept for the candidate, take permission to sit. May I sit sir? And then when they say yes of course, then you say thank you sir, thank you ma'am. And when you pull the chair, if you have to pull it towards you, pull it gently without making noise, without annoying them without troubling them. These are minor soft skills that is combined with body language. And when you sit, do not lean back, do not be relaxed, but slightly bend forward and do not sit towards the back, slightly come to the front. This indicates that you are interested. And in fact, as I was telling you before, when you watch a thriller towards the climax, you automatically come to the front of the seat showing that you are so much interested in watching that movie. Make eye contact from the beginning till the end, give a firm handshake, be polite and keep smiling, be self-confident throughout and mirror their good body language. If they are very aggressive and all that, try to avoid that, but if you find some person very polite, try to mirror, try to replicate their body language and generally they say that when you try to replicate the other person's body language, you indicate you like the person and that person automatically gets attracted towards you. The person develops a likeness, that is one of the secrets of using body language. What are the don'ts? Quick uh, relook at some of the things I said and some more additions, do not chew gum. It indicates you are arrogant, you are uncouth, you do not even know that interview is so important for you, do not smoke or do not go immediately after smoking, do not make any kind of distractions using uh, like playing with your pen, playing with your watch, playing with your keys, uh, unbuttoning and rebuttoning. Do not slouch, okay, like sitting like this as if you are, you are like a jelly before all these people. Do not ramble while talking talk to the point and then do not distract. Do not wear too much perfume, it should not be so staunch, so pungent in its smell. Do not use file bag for defense and do not take coffee drink even if offered freely. In fact, many interviews they just want to see how cool you are in handling this situation when they offer you coffee or drink. Okay. And then they can, uh, when you take it, 
they can even pour it on your uh, uh, dress and see how you are reacting or while you drink it they can ask troublesome questions or it could be very hot and then you without knowing you took it and then you just uh, uh, sort of uh, spilt it out and then it fall, fell on somebody's face. Now, all these troubles could be avoided if you resisted the temptation to take it at the time of interview. If at all you still feel like having it, you can say, sir, I can have it after the interview is over outside, but not now. Let me focus on answering the questions. So, that creates again a sincere professional impression. How do you close it after the interview is done in terms of body language? Before you leave, once again make eye contact, smile, thank them, say thank you, give firm handshake and if they are not like today in all corporate offices they give handshake, but if they do not do say namaste and leave confidently. So, do not fumble or let things fall from your hands. While going do not kick the chair, again pull it gently, make way for you. With the kind of enthusiasm with which you entered, whatever happened in the interview, even if it went very bad for you, even you were frustrated, unhappy with that, but when you, till you go out, you go with the same enthusiasm, because they are still noting and they try to make you feel that you, you, you are not a successful candidate, so this will be a failure for you but they also want to see how you take failure in terms of body language. So, show them that even if it went badly, you took it confidently and then you are still enthusiastic. Who knows, sometimes that part of your character might attract the people and then that may compel them to still select you for the job, although you have not done very well in terms of uh, questions related to the information and knowledge part. And then. My take on this as I uh, conclude this with a final thought on uh, using body language for getting success in the interview. When you go to an interview with the right frame of mind and with the right body language, you will get the right job at the right time. So, wish you success in all your endeavors. So, use positive body language to get success and I am sure when you are able to use this it will be very difficult for people not to select you. Wish you great success. Thank you for watching this video.